Hey there, I'm so glad you could join me today. You know, I love this time of year. Yeah, it's cold. Yeah, sometimes the weather's kind of gross, but it's a good time to be indoors. And for me, since I'm artsy, I like to work on a lot of projects during this time. One of my favorite things about when the weather turns cooler is drinking hot chocolate. Do you like hot chocolate? I thought today's art project would be the perfect activity for a chilly winter day, or maybe a, even a not so chilly winter day. Today, we're going to learn how to create mugs of hot chocolate. Well, not real mugs, but drawings of them. They're going to look real. They're going to look three-dimensional because we are going to be using an art concept called value to show light and dark. We're going to be talking about light sources and shadows. So your picture will definitely look 3D by the time you're done with it. I guess you wanna see mine that I drew. Okay, I'll show it to you. Looks like you could really pick it up, doesn't it? It has a shadow, it has steam coming off the top. So we're gonna be making one that's similar today. Your art supplies are very simple. You'll need some white drawing paper. I folded mine into a square. You can use, I, I would recommend using a square paper. You can cut it off or you could leave it folded, whatever suits you. Any kind of white paper will do just fine. You'll need a pencil. You'll need a black marker for tracing. You know me, I like to use my Sharpies. If you have colored markers, you may use colored markers, but if you don't have them, don't worry. You will definitely need crayons or colored pencils if you don't have crayons. So the supplies I'm using are paper, pencil, black marker, colored markers, and crayons. I'll give you a moment to go get your supplies and we will get started. Okay, you know what to do. Go get your things. I have my paper and I have my pencil ready. So let's go ahead and get started. You can make your mug look however you want it to look. Maybe it looks like a traditional ceramic coffee mug, or maybe it is going to be a fancy dainty teacup. I'm going to start by going about, oh, maybe one third of the way from the top. So not to the half and not to the bottom, but somewhere between the half and the top. And I will start by drawing lightly an oval that's stretched out on its side like that. That's going to be the top part of my mug. Now there are a couple of different ways you can draw a mug. You can make it look like a cylinder, which is something that has straight sides, but I'm going to make mine kind of taper in. That means the sides are going to come in a little bit. So the next thing I need to do is keep those sides of my mug straight, but I want to draw them just a little bit diagonally, but not too much because I don't want this to end up looking like a cone, like an ice cream cone. Now to make this look truly rounded and three-dimensional, even though this is a flat drawing in a flat surface, we're going to draw the bottom of our mug so that it kind of matches the curve in the top. This will look a little bit more 
realistic and believable to the viewer, not somebody who's looking at your artwork. Okay, that's starting, starting to look pretty convincing right now. Next, you'll need to put a handle on your mug. You can choose what side you would rather have your handle on. I'm going to put mine on this side over here. definitely looking like a mug. Hmm. Kind of looks like my mug is floating in midair. I don't want it to look like that. It needs to be on a flat surface like a table. So we're going to draw something that will serve as kind of a horizon line to show where the edge of the table belongs. I, when I draw my line, I will simply skip over any part that belongs to the mug, including the handle. That way, it looks like our mug is closer to us and it is actually sitting on a flat surface. Hmm, what else do we need? Oh, yes, we need to draw the liquid inside. So you remember how we did a curved line at the bottom that matched the curved line at the top? This time, we're going to look at the tallest part of your picture. We call this the rim of the mug. So we're going to draw a curved line inside this oval that matches the curved line of the top part of the rim like this. That will be where our hot chocolate goes. And you can see that mine looks like it's pretty full up at the top. Hmm, you know what else it needs? It needs some marshmallows. Now, what shape do you think of when you think of marshmallows? Personally, I think of little itty bitty cylinders. So what we'll do is we will put some itty bitty cylinders in here, meaning that I'll draw an oval for a top and then two straight sides and I'll draw an oval at the bottom. There's one marshmallow and I can turn them at slightly different angles to make it look like they are coming out of the hot chocolate. Maybe somebody, maybe somebody has just dropped them in and they're kind of plopped in there floating around. So we have our marshmallows. Don't forget to draw some wavy lines to show where the steam goes. When I say lines, you're going to connect them so it won't just be like one single line. It doesn't matter. I think I'm just going to put about four. Okay, that looks pretty realistic so far, doesn't it? Before we do anything else, let's get out our black marker and trace what we have.
if I need to go back and erase any pencil lines that I want to get rid of, I can do this before I start coloring because once those crayons or markers go down, there's no turning back. Those pencil marks are on there forever. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the way that looks right now. Wait a minute. Maybe I want to decorate my mug. The one I showed you a few minutes ago had some stripes and designs on them. Now, if you're doing something like stripes that go around from side to side, you will want to draw those lines curved to make it look realistic. I'm going to do that with mine. Don't put it, don't make straight lines that go across. Try to draw them curved. I'm making curved parallel lines. If I drew it straight, it would look like my mug had been squashed by a train or something. <laughs> and I can put little, little designs on it. Whatever you decide to put on your mug is going to be completely up to you. Before we start to color, I want you to decide what side of your mug your shadow can be found. You can only pick one side because a shadow is only going to fall on one side of your mug. I'm going to make my shadow be on the same side as my mug handle. So before I do any coloring, I'm going to go down to the bottom of my mug, about where it is the, the furthest down, right here, furthest down. And I'm going to lightly draw with a pencil, a horizontal line all the way off the side of my paper. And then I'm going to go up a little bit, maybe about where the handle, the bottom of the handle is, and draw another one. I'm not going to do anything with that yet. First, I'm going to color. I'm going to decorate my background. And since this is the wall behind my mug, I'm going to draw some wallpaper patterns. Again, if you do not have markers, you may use crayons or colored pencils for this part. I'm the type of person who likes to use different things, different art supplies. An art supply is called a medium. So if you're talking about more than one medium, such as markers, markers would be just one thing. If you're talking about more than one, something that's plural, you call it media. That's M-E-D-I-A. And when I'm making art, a lot of the things I enjoy creating are called mixed media. That means I'm taking several different kinds of art supplies and using them together. I'm mixing them. If I were simply drawing a picture with a pencil, I would call that medium. My drawing medium is a pencil, but because I'm using several things, my drawing is considered mixed media. There's my wallpaper. Hmm. Now I'm going to color my mug. Let's see. Yeah, I think I'll make the handle blue. And I can make this band in the middle, a blue band of color.
I'm going to be combining crayon with this marker in a few minutes. So I'm not going to really freak out if I don't have every single little part colored just perfectly with a marker. Sometimes my marker ink is running really low, but I do want to make sure that I've gotten everything colored as neatly as I possibly can. Okay, let's see, I'm going to make it green with the rest of my green. Looks like the only thing I have left to color on my mug is the brown hot chocolate. I will leave the marshmallows alone and I will also leave the steam alone. Those parts most definitely stay white. I think I'm done with my marker part. I'm ready for my crayons now. A lot of my crayons are broken and that's okay. I can still use them. Let's see here. Oh, this is a nice yellow, but I'm going to have to peel back the paper. I'm going to use that for my wallpaper around the stripes. Try to be careful not to get it on the steam. That yellow is so light, I can color right over top of my orange stripes, which are darker, and that won't hurt me. All right, I'm going to pick a solid color for my table. I'll pretend like it's a just a regular tablecloth. I think I'll use this red violet magenta color. And it's okay, I'm gonna color right over top of my shadow. Now when I go to color this, I really should cut the flap off. Or else I'll see a line of the paper underneath. So I'll unfold it and color it. Then I can go back later with scissors and just trim it off. See, I'm, I'm, I'm not really pressing super hard. You can see the texture, the surface of the actual table where I have this paper showing through. It's a little bumpy. It's mostly smooth, but it's a little bumpy. Oh, got some on the mug. That's that's okay. All right, and I can, if I look closely, I can still see those pencil lines that I drew for the shadow. All righty, hold that back over so you can see the picture again. Okay, we talked about shadows and light sources. A light source is something like the sun shining in, or maybe a light bulb, light coming from a lamp, or even light that's overhead. If it's light that comes from the sun, we call that natural light. If it is light that comes from something like a light bulb or a lamp, we call that artificial light. So I said I was going to make my shadow on this side. That means, this side of my mug is going to be dark and the opposite side will be light. I'm not going to make this lighter, but I am going to make this side look darker so it will not look flat. Right now, it just kind of looks like a coloring book page. So I need to find different colors, different values of the colors I'm using. Value means the lightness or darkness of a color. If I've used this kind of pretty blue, I will look for some different 
shades of blue in my box, in my collection. Here we go. I'm gonna give it a try. Does that look pretty close? Oh, I like that. So what I'll do is I will go on the shadow side and I'm going to color my blue and I'll start light. And then if I need to go darker, I can. And I'll try to make that kind of look lighter and lighter. I don't even need to color across the whole entire thing. Do you see how already that's starting to look a little bit round? Let me add this blue to it. Let's try that. How does that look? Ooh, okay. It's a very similar shade. I'll press down a little harder this time as I go across. Ooh, now do you see that? That's looking really neat. What about this one? Okay, that's a little too dark. Let me go back with this blue-green color. Nice. I like that. Okay, that is looking really 3D at this point. Well, we're going to do the same thing on the handle. Just going to go to the edge, the back edge of it where the shadow would be. And then I can do the same thing over here on the inside where it joins the mug. Do you see that really does look 3D, doesn't it? Nice. Okay, now let's go to the green. I'm going to find different values of green. Let's even see if this one shows up. No, it's exactly the same. So it looks like I'm going to have to just use my regular green. And that is working. Good. Oh, I like the way that looks. Don't forget at the bottom. And it should look, when you color, it should look like it's fading very gradually. You should not see a strike. If it looks like you've made a strike, go back and take another color um, that's a little bit lighter and kind of blend it in. I'll take this light green value and kind of go back over top of the wax, the waxy crayon, and it will kind of blend it so it doesn't look like such a sharp edge. I like the way that looks. Now I'm gonna go on the inside and I will go on the shadow side, it will, which the funny thing is on the inside of the mug, it will be opposite from the outside. So we have this here. You know, I think I'm gonna go back and add a little bit more dark blue here after all. There we go. I like the way that looks. I'll add a little bit more to the handle. And for my marshmallows, I don't wanna do a black, I will do a gray, but don't forget they have a shadow side too. And it's the same side for each of those things. Okay, now my marshmallows and look like they have a shadow. But now we need the shadow on the table, don't we? A lot of times people say, oh, shadows are black. No, shadows are actually a darker version of the color that's already existing. So if I use this red violet shade right here, I can start by filling in that space darker with a red violet because I could use black, but then it would just look like I could, had spilled some black paint on the table. This looks a little bit more believable like that. There we go, see? Now I can find some other colors. Let's try that. Let's see. Let's see. Here's a purple. It doesn't have the wrapper on it, so I don't know exactly what kind. I can mix that in there with it so it looks really dark. And remember, the closer the shadow is to the object, the darker it's going to be. Like that. Now, if you were really unhappy with the way it turned out, Technically, you can take black. I'm gonna use a little broken piece of black, but please use the black sparingly. That means don't use a whole lot because it can get real black really fast. But if, if you don't have the exact colors you need, you can kind of fake it a little bit with the black. That didn't hurt anything. I could also add just a teeny, I mean a teeny bit of black to the darkest parts of the mug. I don't really recommend it, but it's okay to add it. 
because you are working with the shade there. And that, my friends, is how you create a mug that shows value. I hope you enjoyed today's project. Now I'm in the mood to drink some hot chocolate. So can you please do me a favor? Share your pictures with me. I can't wait to see them. I know they're going to look awesome because you're awesome artists. So until we can make art again, remember, stay creative and stay artsy. Bye.